Hi guys, today I have another process video to share with you. Um, this is um, using some um, papers and embellishments and things like that from an old Heidi Grace kit that I had. Um, I actually got this at a scrapbooking garage sale and it had all the embellishments and the paper and everything so it was a great great bargain um, but it is an older collection. So um, I'm just taking the background sheet and cutting out the center and I'll use that piece um, later on um, and I'm going to mount that blue piece with the little birdies on top of that and I like the the darker edge I think it kind of brings your eye into the middle of the background so I knew right away that I wanted to do that so that's why I did that at the very beginning sometimes I wait and mount it later on um, but this time I wasn't going to use any mixed media or anything like that so I just kind of did it all at one time and here I'm mounting the picture um, on some of the yellow paper that's going to coordinate and here are some of the scraps and things like that that are left over from other pages that I've done that blue um, I don't know, I guess uh, bubbly kind of background um, layer. That is just some matting that came in the kit. It's kind of got a glossy kind of a texture to it. It's a little shiny and it's got a little bit of a, like a, I don't know, kind of looks like wet water um, if you got a close up of that. And you might be able to see that a little bit later in the close ups. So I'm just going to mess around with these layers a bit. I'm trying to figure out kind of what I want. And it's going to look a lot different than you see it here. I'm going to really move everything around. And I'm going to fuss with the layering quite a bit um, until I kind of get what I want. So um, just a little bit about the picture. Um, this is a picture of my daughter. She um, every year participates in the reading program that they have at the library on, in the summer. And the more books she reads, she gets prizes. So each year we, we try to get to the, the biggest prize. Um, and the, that this year was a free book. Um, tickets to a little uh, place called the Magic House that we where we live and some other little goodies and that little bag and things so she was very excited to be able to to get all those prizes and she's doing a great job reading she's about six years old or well, she is six years old she's almost seven she'll be seven in August and um, she's doing really really well at reading she's probably at about a uh, late first grade early second grade level so I'm really really super proud of her so anyway back to the picture um, and the layout here I've kind of figured out this is what I want to do. I had measured, sort of measured out the little banners um, so I can get them to the size I want. And then I cut out like little fish tails on them to just give it some added texture. And I like how it kind of creates a shelf for the layout and where the picture to sit. And I'm going to fuss with that little um, journaling spot, but I'm ultimately not going to end up using it for the page. And so here I finally decided I'm going to kind of mount the photo in the cluster here. Um, and I'm going to try to use these borders. They're like a fabric, sticky back fabric, and I really like them, but it just didn't really go with this page. So I'm going to put those to the side and, and not use them for this one in the end. These are some other labels that came in the kit. I'm going to take my little powder tool and add the powder to the back of these just because I'm not quite sure if I want to put them in the places where that I select them. Um, and I'm going to do that in a couple minutes, I guess. I forgot I did the doily first. Um, I felt like I needed some um, anchoring for some of the embellishment clusters that I'm going to add. So I pull out these two doilies from my stash. Um, I'm not sure where I got these. I, they're just normal, plain, white doilies. I think I've had them for quite some time, even before um, I started using the doilies on the layouts when I used to use the doilies for other crafting projects. So um, I just pull those out and I'm going through my little swatch book of my mists and I want something very very subtle on this um, and I was having problems finding the color that I really wanted and I ended up using this Tattered Angels color which is called Glacier and it's kind of a really really light barely blue misty color and I'm just going to mist each one of those doilies in that color and then I'll end up drying them up and I'm going to put them in two places on the layout and you're going to see that in just a few minutes. So here I'm just going to dry them with my heat gun and I think I speed past this so you don't have to watch this whole process. I'm just going to clean up this plastic. This is just a plastic bag from, the, from one of my kits. Um, it made a good mat. I couldn't find I think my other mat at the time that I was doing that. So here I'm going to then put those doilies in that top right corner and then in the bottom left hand corner. And because I glued some of those layers down, I just trimmed off some of that doily. Um, and I'm going to end up actually using the other doily because um, that piece isn't quite big enough for what I want to use. So I'm going to trim a little piece off the other one and use that. And then I'll use those scraps someplace else, probably on a different layout. So I'm just going to put those to the side for right now. And then here is where I'm actually going to use that powder tool um, on those labels, just so I can um, kind of move them around without getting them stuck down in the page right now. 
So that's what's happening now. So I'm going to pick, I think about um, two of the labels are going to end up going on the page. And I'm having prob problems with my little powder tool. Um, I've had this powder tool in my stash for quite some time and the bristles are really, really short and it doesn't seem like the powder wants to come through very well. And I actually ended up going to a scrapbooking store this weekend and I just decided to get uh, another tool. Um, so now I have two. I can probably give the other powder tool to my daughter. Um, not that she really needs it. She likes to stick things down just wherever because she's a kid and that's what I should start learning how to do instead of being so worried about where I'm sticking things. Maybe I should just stick them down. Maybe I should learn from um, my daughter. But anyway, um, back to the layout. Um, this is um, some of the little, I guess they're kind of like flare or like buttons. They are fabric covered and they have a little bit of a dimension. So I'm going to add that um, over there um, with that one label. That one label says all of these beautiful moments. And the one on the top left says thinking of you. That little fabric birdie in the bottom left hand corner, they are so adorable. Um, they came with a couple different fabric birds and then the fabric birdhouse. So you can kind of see that I just moved off there to the left. Um, they're very cute. They have little stitching and buttons on them and they're the perfect embellishments. They looked handmade um, and I just, I really love those. So there's going to be two of those fabric buttons, one with the heart and one with the red. And then these are some chipboard arrows that I got in the Studio Calico kit, I think when I was subscribing to the Project Life kits. And so I think these colors work perfectly with this layout. So I'm just going to add this. Um, I like the addition of the chipboard and kind of the shiny look of that. It kind of mimics the um, shiny look of that um, blue scalloped, that's the word I was looking for, scallop, um, mat that I put underneath the picture um, that's peeking out from the bottom of the picture. So I thought that was good. So I'm going to move those at three different places in the layout. I have the shiny um, black, uh, blue scallop and then I have the two arrows and the cluster sections. So here I'm just going to see if I want to add something else. I tried that rainbow one. It wasn't quite what I was looking for. I think it was just a little bit too, I don't know, rainbowy for this layout. So I end up just using the plain blue and the plain red um, chipboard pieces. Next, I'm going to use some of my mind's eye um, chipboard elements. Um, I'm going to use this little banner piece. Um, I just turn the banner to the side. Normally, I would tie some um, twine or something through the two little holes in the top, but because most of it's being covered by the little fabric bird, I decided just to keep it plain. I thought it would just be too much. Um, here, I'm going through my um, wood veneers, trying to figure out some little added extras here. I really like these little asterisks. Um, I'm going to put those in three different places in the layout in each of the clusters, one by the bird and one by each of the little word phrases. And then I'm going to try to add some of these labels, but I'm going to end up not using them. These are some labels from Caitlin Schaefer. You can go to her blog and get these. They're, you can use them on the print and cut on the silhouette or you can hand cut them. Um, and I love them. I use them all the time in my project life and I think I've probably mentioned that before in a video. Here I'm going to try to use these Teresa Collins um, sequins just kind of in a diagonal shape. I'm going to put them all down on the page and then I'm going to decide it, it was just too much. It was like overwhelming. So I decided um, not to use them in the end, but you're going to see me play with them for a couple minutes before I decide, nah, I don't think they're going to work. And the one thing I hate about sequins and static is they stick so bad to your hands and everything else and you can't get them in the bag and you can't get them off of your layout. So I always struggle with them sticking all over my fingers when I'm trying to mess with them. So now I'm finally decided to commit. I'm going to put down these different labels and stuff. I'm just using my ATG gun um, for the labels and that works really well even though you use the powder tool. And then um, I'm using the adhesive on the back of the other elements that came on like the buttons that were already adhesive backed um, and the arrows as well. So I'm just going to place those and I'm going to be a little bit anal about that one little arrow. I'm going to play with that for quite some time. It's, sometimes it gets ridiculous. I, I'm sitting there even thinking, just stick it down, just stick it down. But I still have to play and play and play. So I apologize. So you're probably like, oh, just stick it down. But I finally do. It just takes me a minute. And that little birdie was also self-sticking, so I just stuck them down. And I'm going to take my... Um, Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive with my fine liner bottle and glue all of those pieces down. That fine liner bottle is perfect for these because the, um, the glue is like with that fine liner tube, it just gets on just the pieces you want and they're not globbing everywhere so you have glue oozing everywhere. So I love those. 
And here I'm just going to go through my various alphabets to try to figure out a title for this. Um, I think I end up using a Studio Calico font and then the other font is um, a Lawn Fawn. Or is that Freckled Fawn? I think that's Lawn Fawn. I think. Font. Um, so the what brown is the, either the Lawn Fawn or the Freckled Fawn. My um, little uh, strip got cut off, but I think it's Lawn Fawn. So I'm just going to, my title is going to be Bookworm, um, or Little Bookworm, and so I'm doing Little in this blue font, and I love this blue font because it looks like um, uh, like a little uh, student handwriting font. You have all the little lines, and then if you look really close, it's hard to see um, in, the, in the video, but if you look really close, it has little arrows and things telling you which way to draw your letters and things like that, so I thought that was perfect for um, this layout with reading and things. So here I'm just using my wax paper to place it. Um, I like using the wax paper because then I don't stick it down where I don't want to and I can get the positioning correct without having to move it, especially when you're using a picture on a picture. Um, a lot of times when you put these sticky letters on pictures, you cannot move them after you stick them down. Um, these Studio Calico ones were like not sticky at all, barely. I think I may have gone back and added a little adhesive, but I don't think I do that on video. Here I'm just showing you some close-ups. That's pretty much it for my layout. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me again. Please leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys and hearing what you have to say. Um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Have a great day.